Hey guys, Ben here, and welcome back to another video on Batwoman. So today we're going to be talking about episode 2, part 2 of Crisis on Infinite Earths, which just aired just a minute ago. It's just finished, and I've got a lot of notes to talk about in this episode. So a lot of stuff happened, not as much as last episode, I would say, and I would say last episode was definitely a little bit better. I just felt like it was a bit more exhilarating and a bit more sort of riveting than this episode because this episode was definitely more of like a character episode where they took some time they had more conversations and stuff like that because the stakes were so high last episode on Supergirl and I thought it was very good it just wasn't as good as last episode because last episode was amazing it was like 10 out of 10 material this was like 8.5 material maybe 9 I don't know it was very good though Anyway, so if you do go on to enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment and subscribe if you're new so you don't miss any DC TV videos later this year. Okay, so we got a lot of notes to talk about. So the way we start the episode, we are sort of dealing with the aftermath of Oliver's death. And this sort of ripples throughout the episode. So we have Kara and Sarah, they're talking. They have a few moments earlier in the episode until they all split off. Then we have a visit to Earth 78 where we have captain cold actually doing the voice for the ship so that was really nice and the reason for being there is that sarah promised no crossovers for our other characters you know her other friends which obviously is just a cop out so they don't get all of them in the crossover however we get this new version of heatwave who lets them use the ship this is from earth 78 and so he's very much the same kind of person that you know our normal heatwave is and so then they use the Wave Rider, that's their base for this episode, apparently they need its power for some reason, and so, yeah. Then we get the Monitor showing up, and he's in the ship, he's trying to talk, but then he keeps on being interrupted, and this is during his talk about the Paragons, how we need seven Paragons, seven people of the purest will, who can ultimately stop the crisis. That is what the Book of Destiny has told him recently, because he went back in the time stream, he made a copy and put it in the Wave Rider's library, that's the reason, I think, for why they needed the Wave Rider. And so, that's, you know, what's going on with him, because he's sort of explaining, this is the missions I need you to do to get these specific heroes. We've got four of these heroes that we know so far, there's obviously three more we don't know about, and by the end of the episode we find out it's Kara, Sarah, Kate, and also the Kingdom Come Brandon Ralph version of Superman. So we're going to see a lot of him, which is very exciting because he was great in this episode. It was such a great addition, and I think he's going to be great throughout this crossover. We have Barry, Kara, Sarah, Kate, and like loads of other people on the ship. And so, you know, the idea of the Book of Destiny in this episode, it comes up, you know, what can they do with it? Will they be able to save Earth-38 and bring it back after and such and such like that? I think there is going to be a way that they do in the end bring back Earth 38 or at least, you know, all the people that died. And I think, you know, there is going to be some leeway post crossover in what the individual shows want to do with all their sort of respective characters and their respective Earths and what they haven't explained. And, you know, f mainly for Supergirl, if Earth 30 is going to be back. Because that's what Kara kind of wants to do. She wants to definitely try and get it back if she can because she has hope. And so we have this talk and, you know, the anti-monitor is getting stronger. So they all set out to go get the Paragons. We have Kara, who is the Paragon of Hope. Sarah is the Paragon of Destiny. And the Battle of the Future, which turns out to not be Earth-99, Bruce Wayne, who we'll talk about in a minute. It turns out to be actually Batwoman. So she's another Paragon. And we have the Kryptonian, the Paragon of Truth, so the Kingdom Come version of Superman who has lost absolutely everyone. Okay, so we have Felicity being mentioned, she helped the Monitor, and Lex Luthor is back as well. He shows up and Kara's like, what the fuck are you doing here? And so that's, you know, at the point where we get the reveal, he has a part to play. And so the Monitor revived him on purpose so he could play a role in this crisis because... That's where he was needed, actually. And so Kara and Kate talk about how they couldn't actually save Earth 38. They go to see Bruce Wayne on Earth 99 in Gotham. And, you know, this version of Bruce Wayne is very much so decrepit. He's completely broken. He's very much so kind of like Batman Returns version of Bruce Wayne, where he's, you know, old, he's mechanical, 
but it is also like broken down and he's sort of past this point of redemption and so anyway then the monitor basically gives Lex Luthor the book of destiny on purpose to try and rewrite and you know do this so we would eventually lead to this version of Superman that we eventually find and so he's killing all these versions of Superman all over the multiverse and they must try and you know save Superman and find the right paragon and they eventually do that being Iris, Clark and Lois and so Iris finally shows up in the crossover she wasn't in last episode as far as I can recall and Barry is ready to die but they both have some hope especially Iris due to the fact that you know the monitor said that this wasn't the way he envisioned Oliver dying and maybe he just didn't see this specific moment because there is other stuff with Oliver in this episode which we'll get to in a minute however there is that hope that is still with inside Iris and it's very inspiring in those moments and so Barry and Iris talk about Oliver Iris goes on a mission with Clark because the monitor needs her help and so whilst that's all going on we got the Lazarus pit stuff with Mia and Barry who want to revive Oliver using the Lazarus pit and they do revive Oliver using the Lazarus pit but then they trank him so that Constantine who shows up in this episode he's great tries to actually you know turn him back to normal but Oliver is alive he has been revived but he's not himself just yet and so that's what's going to continue on to the next episode okay so also like I said let's go back to the Earth 99 Gotham City stuff we have Kara and also we have Kate working together and so she kicks down the door of Bruce Wayne's place you know they have a gun pointed at him and Bruce Wayne gets revealed and it's pretty damn awesome seeing Kevin Conroy as Batman he has no code he's killed so many people he has these trophies he actually had a Batman vs Superman fight which I thought was absolutely brilliant that they added that in and so he killed his version of Superman so that's a massive thing Batman killed Superman which is obviously you know the idea of Batman vs Superman the film was that they were trying to kill each other so I thought that was a nice little easter egg to that and so you know he's killed all these people he's passed the point of redemption and Batwoman ends up actually killing him but like not on purpose he gets electrocuted he dies so they think oh we've killed the paragon but it turns out it's Batwoman who's the paragon so Kevin Conroy had some great scenes in this episode as a future version of Bruce Wayne on another earth earth 99 and so we see all these different versions of Superman being killed by Lex which is on purpose via the monitor's control and so one version who dies is from a Superman musical version apparently the Earth 75 version so I didn't notice that at first but that was something someone pointed out online then we have a visit to Earth 167 where we have Clark Kent who is a Smallville version of himself is confirmed it's part of the Arrowverse just like Titans and so Lex shows up but it's not his normal version of Lex Luthor obviously referencing to Smallville and how it was a different actor Michael Rosenbaum so we have Clark versus Lex and so it turns out he actually gave up his powers he's just Clark Kent and he's not affected by kryptonite so we have Erica Durant showing up as Lois obviously she just died last episode as Allura Zorel which is very sad but Kara didn't actually seem to be very much so in mourning that much apart from like the very first part of the episode so I really hope we get that but anyway so yeah this is great stuff especially with the Smallville stuff it lasted longer than I expected and so he has a kid he's happy he lives this normal life and so Lex is in the end you know he doesn't really touch him and they just sort of go on live on happily and you know it's very Smallville and I really really enjoyed it all right, so let's move on. So we have what's going on. We meet Earth 96 version of Superman, who is actually the Kingdom Come version of himself. You know, wearing the new suit, and it looks so freaking cool. And then we have this sort of Superman battle against each other, with Lex actually trying to make Superman kill Superman. So we have our normal version versus the Kingdom Come version of Superman, played by Brandon Ralph. It was so cool as Superman. And so apparently the whole building was gassed in the past and it killed everyone. So he has suffered so much loss and, you know, he's lost more than any mortal man could endure, as the monitor said. And so, 
yeah, with Lex showing up, we have Superman vs Superman. They have a massive fight throughout the city, throughout Metropolis. The CGI is a little iffy, but you know it's bearable, and it's just a pretty cool concept. Superman vs Superman, and I thought it worked pretty well. And so we have Iris and Lois looking at the Book of Destiny because they capture and knock out Lex Luthor, which was very good. And then we go back to the Lazarus Pit stuff. You know, there is a lot going on. I find there's three real main stories. We have the Superman stuff going on there. We have the Lazarus Pit stuff with Barry and Sarah. And then we have the Batwoman and Supergirl stuff with Batman over on Earth-99 in this episode. So there's sort of three main stories that we're flipping back and forth between. And so Oliver actually goes into the Lazarus Pit. This is in Earth-18. Jonah Hex shows up, nice cameo. Sarah gives him the scar. And obviously it's him from another Earth, so he doesn't have the scar yet. So she was like, you know, you're going to get it eventually, so I'll just do it for you. And it turns out Oliver is back. Oliver has been revived, as many of us suspected, considering he died very abruptly the last episode. And it was the first episode of the crossover. We've seen more footage than that. So he's back, but he has no soul because he's been revived via the Lazarus Pit. And so they have to save his soul. And that's what Constantine tries to do in this episode, but kind of fails. Okay, so we go back to Kara and Kate, and we have this great moment on the Wave Rider when they've, you know, controlled Superman, the Kingdom Come version. He is back to normal. Obviously, a doppelganger of Ray Palmer, played by Brandon Ralph. And so we get this great moment between Kara and him when Kara is seeing him for the first time, saying, Ray, you're looking jacked. And I really laughed. It was absolutely hilarious. I loved that bit. That was just very funny. But then, obviously, she finds out, you know, it's technically your cousin on another Earth. So, yeah, that's kind of funny. Anyway, so we have Batwoman. She is revealed to be the Paragon of Courage. So we got four Paragons right now. We need three more. I believe that Oliver is probably one of them, and that's why we need him back. And obviously, I think the Flash as well. You know, the Flash hasn't been said to be a paragon just yet and I'm very much so expecting that and then maybe one more person and I can't think of who it could be off the top of my head but it could be anyone maybe it's me a smoke or something like that all right so we have Kara and Kate talking towards the end of the episode Kara's hopeful that she can sort of bring back everything that she has lost and then we move on to the ending of the episode and it turns out Batwoman has a piece of kryptonite so obviously she took that and we have Lila being screwed over by the one and only Anti-Monitor. He shows up, we get our first good look at him, and oh my god, he looks sick. And so he says, come Harbinger, there is work to be done. So he's twisted Harbinger via getting in her head. So what's your reaction to this episode? How did you like it? And how did you like the ending, seeing the Anti-Monitor? I am so excited for tomorrow's episode of The Flash. This is obviously the sort of cliffhanger episode until we wait for Arrow and Legends episodes of Crisis after the break. So thank you guys for watching, I'll catch you guys later, goodbye.